everybody pays more attention to the Olympics. You know, it's just, it's bigger. No matter what, you're gonna race on a body of water. Then at the Olympics, it's like grandstands, media doc, all sorts of things. So it's just, everything's bigger and there's more at stake for yourself and uh, for the country. So it's, it's, it's really special. Yeah, rowing is a sport that's not well known or well understood in most societies. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of sport where you have to enjoy the process. Uh, you have to enjoy the practices, the grind of working day after day after day. Uh, there's not a lot of competitions related to the number of workouts necessary. So in other words, rowing is not a game sport like professional hockey or football or even a baseball at the extreme which spends just about all of its time playing games and not a lot of practice. We'll probably practice um, at the club level uh, 30 or 40 times for every race, at the international level several hundred times for every race and international athletes generally hit a major peak once a season and that could be, for example, the World Championships or the Canadian High School Run Championships. Um, and uh, we believe that they could probably hit one other sub-peak in a year, and usually that sub-peak is when you're trying out for the team. Uh, we have to possess basically lungs on legs is what we look for. The ability to, to have a strong aerobic base, so we're, we have a really good endurance base, and then a fair amount of power within that. That's essentially what we're looking for. We spend a lot more time training than we do racing. You know, we train seven hours a day. Like this past four years, it was seven days a week. So no days off. Every decision you make is based around, is this gonna make me go faster? So, you know, you get a call from your buddy and he's like, hey, come downtown, like come have a beer with me or something. And it's like, no, I can't do that because I practice tomorrow. Uh, it's unlike any other team. There's, there's no there's no points there's no goals there's no assists it's um you, you win it you truly do win as a team and lose as a team so the success didn't happen on the water initially but once it once it happened it kind of became this this euphoric feeling this this feeling that i just I wanted to keep chasing and keep achieving the crab is the term for when our blade the 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 oar that we use to propel the boat um doesn't go in square so it goes in on an angle like this and when it goes in on an angle it slices down to the basically to the bottom and when your boat's moving very quickly that's very disruptive so it sometimes it takes the oar out of the athlete's hand uh, sometimes it pushes them back and in very rare occasions it takes them right out of the boat <laughs> rio was um i mean it was a bit of a nightmare if i'm being totally honest with you like that's catching there um catching a crab in the olympics is uh I mean, it's something you joke about. It's something I joked about as a, as a high school kid with, with, with Will and the other, my other teammates there. It's like, yeah, you can catch a crab in practice and it's a big deal or it's, it sucks but, or even in a race. But then you, you always say like, oh, but nothing's as bad as catching a crab at the Olympics. But, you know, it, it, it happened. And I, I had never happened before. Um, it, was just, it was just an honest, bad stroke. I just, I lost my grip on the oar and it cost us, it cost just dearly um you know I could, I could give you a hundred excuses but that's 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 the fine line really um you know we were in a tight tight spot there trying to qualify directly to the a final there's we we're moving on the on the germans the world champions and uh we just tried to make a push and i just just lost lost the grip of my handle and it it, it, uh, it cost us so uh it, it was tough i mean and then we failed to qualify two days later out of the Repisha and I, I've always sort of blamed myself still for that I just said I think that the, the result in the heat kind of threw us off our threw us off our game a little bit we were we, we took off in the rep just a little bit uh, 
not not with full intention. I think we were a bit we were a bit timid in that race, and there's no room for that at the Olympics. So. Well, fifth place finish in the repechage means the Canadians med quad uh, will not advance to the final. Rob, this has been a struggle since you guys uh, rode in the heat. Uh, t tell me what happened out there today. Oh, well, I think we had a you know pretty good start, and then uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. I was just focused on Will, the guy in front of me there, the man in front of me, and uh, I thought we were having a pretty good, pretty good race for the first thousand. And then uh, I think we just got a, you know, the two crews that won, they uh, they're, they're world class. They're, they're the best in the world, the Germans, and uh, I guess it was the Brits there that uh, that also qualified and. Uh, like they just got the jump on us in the, in the third 500, and we weren't able to re recover. So, you know, people are going to talk about the missed opportunity and the heats and the drop door. How big of a factor, you know, when you look back? I know it's it's pretty close to the bone right now, but how big of a factor and missed opportunity was that? Yeah, I mean, we had, we, had, we had set ourselves up to uh, to qualify directly to the A final, and uh, you know, I, I think the ownership's on me for that one. I. Let the caught a wave with my with my blade and uh, lost my grip and uh, that was it. Happened uh, happened in an incident and uh, there was no chance to recover. So yeah, I just feel really bad for the, the three teammates there. You know, we're in this every step of the way together and uh, you know I feel like I really sort of let let them down there. So I have to live with this one for a while. Rob, thank you. I had really great teammates um, and and the coach to really who really understood. Like he they were they were just so supportive of me i mean they that that helps that made all the difference i think having having them there and just i mean i felt so so responsible but they just said it was not to not to feel that way and you know it could happen to anybody and it, so that that helped a lot so i think that that anybody who's been to the who has made it as far as the olympic games have had to overcome a, a fair amount of adversity at some point or another, and I had I've been thinking quite a bit about this. This was a this was a I think a lesson for anybody within Canadian rowing. We had a we had a, an excellent performance within the lightweight women's double, and we had some what I would consider very good, very good and strong and exceptional performances outside of that. Um, however, they didn't always yield the results we were after. And a few months ago, I was at a conference where um, the Canadian women's soccer coach, John, a gentleman by the name of John Herdman, gave a discussion. And he talks about adversity in sport, and he only used the term adversity once, and the rest of the time he referred to it as opportunity. I think that's how they do it. I think you, if you look at it just as a, as a, as a failure, and you don't, you're not able to let go of it, then you can't move forward from it. You can't grow from it. The, the fact of the matter is. It happens. Stuff happens. Is it supposed to happen at the Olympics? No, but it does, right? It happens across all sports. Across, you see those types of things happen, and essentially, it's how you manage it immediately. Which is, you know, do you have something in place for recovery? How long does it take you take you to recover in that situation to put them in a place where they didn't want to be, right? Um, but had they had they not had the confidence in Rob, and had he not had the confidence in himself. They probably wouldn't have been able to go back out and, and keep racing. Um, I think it fuels my fire for 2020 in Tokyo for sure. If things go well, then and I'm enjoying it still. Then I'll, I'll I'll push on. They're just doing a bit of a restructuring now, so it's it's been good. It's refreshing. Um, I think we're on the right track for success. I, I really hope that we're going to get some more some more medals around our necks um, these next couple of years. Like rowing Canada has been pretty successful when. They've had a, a rough previous Olympics. If you look at Athens and the guys in the eight, uh, I got to watch those guys train and they were just so fired up to go win in Beijing because they needed to put things right. And uh, I think that it's a, it's a pretty special time right now because well, Ron Canada is going through a lot of different stuff, but there's a lot of really good athletes that are really fired up right now. So 